In this video, we will do a stock analysis on Taiwan Semiconductor to help you determine if it is a buy, a hold or a sell. Now, Justin, we have actually done a comparison on five different semiconductor stocks. And if you want to check it out, click on the card above. So for this video, we will be looking at Taiwan Semiconductor and we will start with Justin. Now, Justin has got a 12 point checklist. I've got a 10 point checklist that we usually go through. And then at the end, we compare our verdicts with each other. If you like any of our checklists, please remember to click the like button below this video. So with that being said, Justin, let's head over into your analysis. All right, cool. So Davi, you know, the first thing I like to look at is the charts. I'm not a technical trader, but I like to get a feel for what's been happening in the market. And so we can see here, there's been a lot of general upward momentum. There's been a couple of dips overall, but we can see especially 2021, huge peaks in the stock price and then of course the latter part just a little bit of a drop off and it's pretty much the same thing we've seen with most of the semiconductor stocks that we've been looking at so very much a general market trend then if we come down and just have a look at the key indicators quickly we can see good market cap share price has definitely done well uh, from the 10 year to the current price p ratio sitting at 27 and darby profit margin you know i like profit 38.15 healthy profit margin, and of course, strong equity, and then looking to the dividend, good dividend on the stock, and of course, that dividend cost to company is less than free cash flow, so they're left with net free cash flow, so we definitely like to see that. And then just coming across onto the year on years, now of course, what we're wanting to see is consecutive growth in our numbers year on year, and we see the total revenue over here, and we have a look at operating cash flow. Those are the two that have done really well year on year over the last three year period. But like most of the semiconductor stocks, you know, the last two years have been a little bit of a challenge. And we can see this shows by the red blocks that we're looking at here. It's been a little bit of up, up and upheaval amongst the numbers. And I think that is the challenge that most of the stocks have faced. Now, of course, we come down to my 12 point checklist to make sense of this. And now these are the 12 fundamental questions I ask myself whenever I'm investing into any stock. These are the first 12 questions I ask. And they're not necessarily the same questions that Davi would ask or perhaps other investors. And it is based on my personal allocation of capital and the outcome that I want. So the first question I'm asking is, has the share price doubled on the 10 year or since inception? And indeed it has. Is the P ratio between one and 25 just sneaking over the line at 27? So unfortunately I have to mark them down. Profit margin greater than 10%, very, very healthy profit margin. And so we give them a check mark there. They've got strong equity, so assets are greater than liabilities. And of course that dividend cost is less than free cash flow. Number of shares, unfortunately, Darby, not been going down year on year for the last three years, so we have to mark them down. However, total revenue has been doing the right things, so we give them a check mark there. Uh, gross profit and operating income, both of these not heading in the right direction that we're looking for. Net income from continued operations, of course, under pressure as well. Operating cash flow, I actually marked this incorrectly on my sheet, they do get a check mark there. And then of course, under free cash flow, that has not been giving me the growth that I'm looking for year on year. So I think Davi, before we jump into uh, my fundamental analysis of this in terms of the pricing and also looking at the returns on equity and where I think the price is going. Let's quickly jump in and have a look at your graphs because you have a more visual way of looking at the numbers and I think it will also just help people gather sort of what the momentum is on the stock at the moment. Yes, so if you guys like Justin's checklist, please remember to click the like button below this video. It really helps out our channel a lot. So the first thing I usually look at is the basics which Justin have already covered but then I look at the multiples to see how it compares to the last five years. In this case, we will see that the price to earnings, the price to book, price to sales, and the price to cash flow is a little bit higher than the five year average, which is also understandable. There is a lot of hype at the moment in this industry because of the shortage chips. So moving on to the fundamentals, the first thing I look at is the revenues. And as you can see, it has been going in an upward trend. The earnings per share, we see the same thing. It has also been going up. And keep in mind, these numbers are based in Taiwan dollars. Then moving on to the return on equity, my benchmark is usually 10%. As you can see, they are doing really well, sitting at around 30% at the moment. And before that, they have always been doing more than 20%. The same with return on invested capital, doing really well, sitting at 24%. And my benchmark is usually 10%. Gross margins also really good. There was a drop in 2018, 2019, but it has recovered and they're back to 53%, which is really healthy gross margins. And the same with net margins. Like Justin said, look at these net margins. It looks absolutely amazing. So really, really good net margins. 
The operating cash flows, it has also been going up over the last few years, which is exactly what you want to see. The free cash flows, however, a little bit more inconsistent. They have obviously been spending more on capital expenditure over in 2019. Then moving on to the current ratio, it is more than one, which means that they do have, a cur they do have more current assets than current liabilities. So they get a check there. Debt to equity, also really good debt to equity ratio below 40%. So they passed my criteria on that as well. And then with the shares outstanding, we see that it's pretty much flat. So the shareholders have not been diluted. So that's also a good sign. That brings me to my 10 point checklist. So the current ratio is more than one debt to equity, less than 40% revenues have been growing by more than 5%. The return on equity and the return on invested capital have been growing really well, 25 and 22%. Now, the free cash flows and the operating cash flows, even though it has been in an uptrend, there was a few, a few years where it was a little bit inconsistent. And unfortunately, it doesn't meet the 10% compounded annual growth rate that I require. But the gross margins, more than 20%, net margins, more than 10%, and the earnings per share have been growing really nicely by around 11.5%, which brings the fundamentals to 8 out of 10 or 80%, really, if you can put it that way. So... Justin, let's head over to your price predictions and your analyst ratings and then see what you think about the stock and what you think this stock is really worth. All right, cool. So, Davi, on the fundamentals, I'm scoring at 50 50. Uh, they're move pretty a bit much. Up there? Uh, the, I've actually purposely hidden that because, oh, it's, oh, uh, oh, because I made a mistake on the previous page. But essentially, we're 50 50 on the fundamentals. Um, it means that they're meeting 50% of my criteria, 50% of the criteria they haven't met. So I'm pretty neutral on the fundamentals. It doesn't mean that it's a negative rating for the fundamentals. It just means that it's a very neutral um, point. Now, looking at the industry median target, I'm picking up Davi 147. Uh, for the stock return on equity 29.84 as you mentioned return on asset currently sitting 13.62 uh, percent that gives my projection at about 128.50 which by the way is about 14 bucks per share 14.96 actually just shy of 15 bucks per share potential gain over the next 12 months and that would give me a projected net margin of 13.8 uh, percent which is really not bad if you take into consideration uh, all things including dividends and and all the other potentials in the stock so i think a 13 percent margin on the stock is pretty fair i think it's very conservative um having said that though i think the fundamentals need a little bit of work in terms of the year on years and especially if i can see a little bit of corrections over the next uh, reporting period over the next year then i think certainly this could be a very good stock long term so where would where would you stand buy sell or hold completely neutral So let's head over to my price prediction and see what I think about the stock. And this is quite funny, Justin. I think our ratings, we're going to have to revise that because if you look at my price prediction, my price prediction is actually less than yours. So, okay, the current price is 113. I feel that there is a little bit of hype in the market and that I do feel that they are a little bit overvalued. However, I think it is still a great stock. The fundamentals, 8 out of 10. And I've actually gone as far as to backdate the fundamentals over the last 10 years. And funny enough, they actually do better on the fundamentals then. Over the last 10 years, it's been a annual, compounded annual growth rate of about 10% on average more uh, on free cash flows, operating cash flows, earnings per share, and the return on equity and return on invested capital. So for that, that reason, I would say that this stock is a buy. Yeah! But personally, I will not buy at the current levels. That doesn't mean for other people it won't. So that all depends on your level of um, risk and your discount rates, of course. But I think it's a great stock. I think that they will continue to do well. They have always been doing well. They have seen really, really nice, consistent growth over the last few years. It's just I feel that it's a little bit hyped at the moment. And I think there will be a correction sometime. But um, yes, for that, for that reason... I feel that I'm pretty much neutral on the price, but I'm definitely long on the stock. So if you guys found value from this video, please remember to click the like button below this video. It really helps out the channel a lot. And also click on the red subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified whenever we do more videos like this. If you like money, creating wealth and want financial freedom, please join our money tribe by clicking the subscribe button below this video now. And because I know you need a little extra motivation, 
every month we will give away a copy of our book The Money Secret along with some really cool channel merchandise and we will give it to active subscribers on this channel. So make sure to click the subscribe button below this video now and click the bell icon to be notified whenever we do more videos like this.